Every single time I come here, it blows me away. It is insanely beautiful. It's like no other cave I've ever seen. Formation here, the angel's wing, that's one of many. Two hours from Sydney, a cotton-like mist covers the Blue Mountains chain every morning. This region was the setting of a funny story. In 1840, a farmer from Sydney was running after a livestock thief when he stumbled upon a major discovery, a gigantic network of caves like a well-kept secret. Gordon Mills has been a guide at the Jenaland Caves for 12 years. They're the oldest dated caves on the planet. These caves are here because of this amazing rock we call limestone. All limestone is in fact marine, and it's the shells of marine organisms, marine invertebrates, that have been piled up a bit like a reef, a bit like the Great Barrier Reef, but we're talking way, way back. This is before dinosaurs. Some of the caves here have been dated at 340 million years old. That's a hell of a thing. Um, and they're mainly formed by hydrothermal water. So you've got your sort of volcanic hot springs, your classic hot springs bubbling up from deep in the earth, dissolving up to make massive solution domes. And the third part of the story of the natural environment at Janolan is what a lot of people come to see, that's the crystal. You've got your stalactites, your stalagmites, and they are simply water, rainwater, leaking through cracks in the rock. It's dissolving the mineral out of the limestone. When people first came to these caves, Aboriginal people, tens of thousands of years ago, the Gundungurra and the Wiradjuri are the traditional custodians. We pay respect to elders past and present. They knew the caves were here before anybody. Underground can be found a true natural cathedral in all shades of yellow. Right now, we're standing at the level of the Janolan River, and this river has made a good portion of the caves at Janolan. The water itself is very pure and it's drinkable. In fact, this is our water supply. It's amazing stuff, it's filtered through rock. It's some of the purest water you can ever have. Right now, we have the water just beneath where I'm standing. However, I've many times seen the water at least this high. After several days of rain, yeah, four or five days of heavy rain, it will creep up. The water will creep up, as has happened several times, and you'll notice that's what's moved the sediment around, and that pretty much eventually is what's formed the cave. You can see that there's a distinct yellow tinge, and this yellow comes from this substance called illite. It started off as a volcanic ash and it's been washed into the caves and it has been brought in by the rising and the falling of the stream next to us. Heavy rain, it will rise, it'll wash the sediments. It'll wash the illite, it'll wash all sorts of sediments throughout the cave system. And in this case, you see this beautiful yellow tinge and it's all around us. This area of the cave has a very timeless feeling to me. You can hear the drips of water. That water has been dripping in here since before human civilization existed, and it will continue way past human civilization. You could have come here during the Ice Age, it would look exactly the same. The Jenalan Caves spread over 40 kilometers and form the biggest known underground network in the world. The most beautiful of these caves can be found behind a small door. Where we are now is a cave called the Temple of Baal. It's a singular cave. 
Every single time I come here, it blows me away. It is insanely beautiful. It's like no other cave I've ever seen. Formation here, the angel's wing, that's one of many. Well, the angel's wing uh, is a shawl and there's quite a few around here. How shawls differ from normal stalactites, normal stalactites are a drop of water, just straight down. A shawl is a bit like sticking your arm under a tap and water's running along the bottom. And it makes this little trail of crystal which it leaves behind. Over thousands of years, tens of thousands, millions of years, you get these larger and larger formations under the right conditions. But they're only about as thick as a pane of window glass. They're quite fragile. We have these amazing crystals growing in the caves here at Janolan. They are calcite crystal. It's CaCO3, calcium carbonate, but known as calcite. And they can grow in all sorts of different ways and in different directions, and nobody really knows why. Guiding here is telling stories. It is interpreting the natural world, interpreting deep time. The story of the earth is a story. In the natural world, deep time, they both just tie in beautifully. I started doing a course at College in the Blue Mountains in guiding. And one of my teachers was a guide here. And she steered me towards this job as a casual guide. And I thought it was fabulous. I'd been coming here since a child. I grew up in Sydney. I never thought I could work here in my wildest dreams. I thought you had to go to university for 12,000 years or something to be able to work in a place like this. I've done a couple of short courses in geology, basically reading. I just love finding out the truth, the matter, the truth of things. And the more you find out, the more you realise you don't know. It's the work of a lifetime. In fact, several lifetimes to understand these enigmatic characters that we call caves. Fascinating stuff. Yellow of today and yellow of yore. Australia is like a jewellery box where the colour of the sun shines in all possible shapes through the hands of artists and in every corner of the wilderness. 